back as always for another episode of the Unpro Pro Rugby Show or the Top Rugby Show with, as always, again, our sexy Pom guest, Mike. What's happening, man? How are you? I'm uh, good, mate. I'm good. Personal level, I'm great. Uh, from an English rugby fan's perspective, not so great. But we'll get into it, mate. It's been, um, it was good. Another good round of um, rugby, mate. A lot of talking points. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, it's gonna be gonna be interesting. My my first talking point is my my TikTok is blown up. That's crazy, viral. man. That's crazy. Viral. It's like, well, I mean, not not viral in viral sense, right. but seventy thousand views on a on a on a video. That's crazy for like I think I had like thirteen followers at the time. Yeah, that's it's cool. that's the that's a good thing about TikTok, mate. Is someone sees it. If someone sees it and people watch it, it will go. Do you exactly. know what I mean? Whereas like Instagram things is a little bit slower. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's just so, another just another angle to I'm always looking for and you were the mm. one that did say to make a a TikTok page because man, I'm I'm getting old for all these the social media stuff. It's it's hard to kind of keep up with all of the ones, man. It's a lot, mate. And it's cool, but it's cool it, to get it from like you want to be hitting like the viewers or fans or yeah. whatever from different angles. That's right. So yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. Percent. So we've got a, a lot to get through. I first want to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm hating myself for doing this, but credit where credit is due to Merriweather that are, they've got all three grades in the grand final this weekend. Uh, Premier one is obviously Greens, Merriweather versus Maitland. Um, it's a big one. I mean, that's massive. I don't, I, I'm not too sure on the other grand finals, but I know Merriweather is in all three grades. Um, I'm, I think then Wanderers are then the other two or Beaches are in third grade. And then I'm pretty sure yep. Wanderers are in second grade. So yeah. Well what are your done. thoughts on, what are your thoughts on that first grade? Who, who do you reckon is going to come away with the uh, chockies? I think um, Merriweather will be too strong. I think, I think Maitland, really? had, Maitland had a massive game this week in that pass. They come back from like, they were down by 20 or something points and they come back to win. Um, and I think that took a lot out of them. I think they, they yeah. are getting a few players back. And Merriweather yeah. are without Lockie Milton, who's their starting eight, which is a ma- he's okay. a massive, he's massive for their attack. Yeah, um, but I think they've <clears throat> across the park, man. They've got some strong plays in all positions, so I think they'll go. And then that means they go back to back. So whether we hate them or like them, love them, whatever, that's really good. done well. No matter who you 100%. are, that's um, yeah. that's really good. Fair play to him. All right, enough about Merriweather. Fucking. Fuck me. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was painful for you, hey. Yeah, it did. 100%. That, that burn, we, that we, burn. Beat, we beat them this year, though. So, fucking. That's we, a tough we, thing, hey. We, winners. That's a tough thing. Like, through the year, you can you can beat these teams and you see them in the grand final and you're like, that was that was our chance. Yeah. But it can't, like, man, when it comes to knock it, that's when it counts. Knock out games. And if you're that's not, it. Those, you're not fucking, nothing's yep. happening. So, great. Okay, we're swiftly moving along. To play on the knock-ons, and it's my turn this week. And I've only hit us with one because we've got lots to get into. <laughs> but this is this is one, and it's aimed at your your faithful, your home, your or well, not your home per se, not Cornish, <coughs> not or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's at the English team mainly. Okay. Yeah. I've wrote your team slash England team because it's mainly about them yeah. celebrating every call that goes their way. Play on a knock-on. Um, it's an um it's a knock on for me. It's really funny you brought this up because I had this conversation with my brother just yesterday. Um look, I'm all for momentum in games is is massive. And when you, you know, you might put a big shot on, you might charge a kick down, which might lead to a scoring opportunity. I know that's a big momentum changer. By all means, congratulate that player and get behind them. But the celebrations. Mm, we yeah, it's it's a little bit too much for me. The, the final the final siren went. The referee blew his whistle, and a few of those players raised both both arms and looked up to the heavens like like it was a World Cup final. And I, I, the reason I brought it up with my brother is because I was like, "Am I the only one seeing this?" Yeah, but yeah, I get it. Like a turnover is great, but it's an eighty minute game. You can't sell it. Like especially if you're gonna go on and lose as well. Like, okay. but like I said, no, it's, it's a knock on for me because they overdid it. I would in some situations say play on because yeah. in, encouraging that play is great, yeah. but you need to contain your excitement, especially in big moments as well. I get it's exciting, but these uh, players that have been around for a bit. I don't know where that's come from, to yeah. be honest, because I've really seen it before, but 
big knock on for me, mate, for yeah. sure. I think the big one that went viral is of, of, of Mario Toje does it Toje. a lot. But then one of Ben Earl, where they won, it was a skew, like a not straight throw at a line out. And it was, it was like five minutes into the game. And he's gone on two knees, like fucking rah. I'm like, wow, that's it's a, it's, <laughs> it's a straight, it's a strange tactic. Look, I, I put myself in the opposition's shoes. I'm thinking they are pumped. Like if someone did that to me, yeah, that's a bit of an over the top reaction. But if I'm looking at the other team and they're that hyped up and that pumped, I'm thinking, wow, this team's up for it. But this is rugby. This isn't, this isn't soccer. This isn't NBA basketball, like where it's sort of expected. Like, yeah, it's a big knock on for me in some situations play on but no the england team are what in in the current situation they're in yep. come on boys like pull your heads in a bit get your performance right and then celebrate yeah absolutely all right well that's that's that we're moving on to the spring box versus wales and again guys we all know it is warm-up quotation marks warm-up games um but it is at the end of the day it is still counted as a test cap these guys are obviously both teams are going out to I can put all players individually are going out to put their name forward for World Cup honours. Tough result for Wales. I know leading into the game, I think on the day or maybe the Thursday before they had three of like their most experienced players pulled out with little, little niggles and the coaches mm. didn't want to, I think Dan Bigger, um, Lee Hoff, it was, it was three very, very like 100 cap established players. players yeah. yeah, yeah, George yeah. Nor, stuff like that. But still, these are like the guys that have stepped in. There's how many games in a World Cup? Those guys need to be filling mm. in. You need to be able to be that number one player. 16 to 52 at the Principality. That is a massive, just again, I don't care who's on the field. You getting, you yep. putting that Wales or the, your country's jumper on your shoulders. You're going to give everything for that jumper. I think it just showed like, I mean, the Springboks did play near full strength. It showed the Springboks a little bit of the Springboks dominance. Mate, it was it was convincing. It was um oh, we touched on this last week. Remember we talked about the whole environment of the Welsh rugby, like Principality Stadium, yep. eighty thousand people, ninety thousand people. This the, the anthem is very in your face, like it's an intimidating place to go. The the Springboks were just um outstanding. Again, like you just mentioned, a few players dropped out through injury, niggly injuries. But again, like the well, the Welsh made the changes, didn't pay off, yeah. didn't just not pay off. Like they got outplayed and outclassed in every aspect of the game. And you can't take anything away from South Africa. Yeah, they're playing a slightly understrength Wales team, but it's an international game of rugby. This isn't, you know, this isn't this isn't club rugby. And they've absolutely demolished that team in Wales in front of our home crowd. It's it's exciting for South African rugby, mate. You must have a big grin on your face at the moment. It's and it started at the anthem, seeing fucking all the walkout already, seeing Khaleesi lead Sia Khaleesi back into full full playing, back leading the Springboks out, pumping out the national anthem and getting through a full half. No injury nickels, nothing like that. He played his full 40 minutes, played really well. Try assist yeah. being one of them, one of the, I mean, just, I think he's, Without him even doing, let's say he doesn't have his best game, just him being on the field is such a big lift for it, the box. Oh, I was just about to say this, and people are probably going to laugh when I say this. He's got such a dominance about him. Like, you look at the likes of people like LeBron James and Tiger Woods. When I see Khaleesi lead his team out, he's just got this sort of like element of just power. It, it's like if, if I was the opposition team and Khaleesi walked out leading that team that big physical South African team you know it's going to be a long day at the office whether you win or lose but he's just got that that aura about him that you really want as a captain and he just I don't know do, do you know what I'm saying do you get yep, the same 100%, thing with him 100% yep. I wrote it on I did a little, read a little yep yep and Richie McCall those day. types of yep. those types of players and, and yep. I'm not saying Sia Khaleesi is at the level at what Richie McCall finished his career at He's not there mm. yet or not close yeah. to it. Because, I mean, let's be honest, Richie McCaw is the goat of goats. Ultimate. Like yeah. having that, yeah, like you said, that power, that aura about them when they are leading, when they are where they need to be, leading out there. Yeah. I de it definitely must give the rest of those guys on the team just that extra 20, 30 yeah. minutes in them just to be like, well, fuck, our captain is back. He's leading yeah. us. And, he's, um, he's, 
like I said, just he's got just got that aura about him, and, and he he backs it up every every time he plays. He backs it up. He's a great player. He holds his holds his own with the best players in the, in the world. But like I said, I think his his aura about him and his dominance in in person can almost speak louder than his actions on the field at times. And I think again, going into a World Cup, having lifted a World Cup prior, that's going to be huge for South Africa in the form they're in, mate. I can see, yeah, I know. Back to I'm back not. is confirmed. Yeah. That's what I said. I yeah. said on the post was when Silikisi was, Sia Kulisi was back. Yeah. So only confirms a back to back World Cup, guys. And Mate, I, I can't, I, I can't I'm, put I'm it. all about uh, tinfoil hat and conspiracies. I look into every omen. If the stars are aligned, yeah. can't help it, mate. Like it's, you couldn't be, I, I don't think you can be in a better position as a South African player or supporter going into this world cup in the form that you're in with the players you've got you couldn't i mean you tell me is there is there anyone that you'd have there or is there any anything you'd change still, in that environment yeah um and you're gonna agree with me here now they've mm. spoken about it before our goal kicking is still a big Pollard. it's still a big problem i did see there was a nice photo or there's been some photos leaked of pollard in back to full training apparently him and lucan your arm are gonna be fully fit and ready to go. I think this, the yeah. Springbok squad or World Cup squad is announced next week. Okay. Uh, they play they play the All Blacks this weekend at Twickenham. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, those guys were sitting, waiting, watching with, I mean, I think there was froth coming out their mouths when they were sitting on the bench watching the game. Uh, Andre Pollard and mm-hmm. look on your arm. It's just, it's like, because... Uh, Sure, I know guys are told not to really look into much that's going on in social media and stuff like that. And this this is going both ways. Andre Pollard mm. looking at social media, seeing everyone calling for him to be back. And yeah. then him coming back being like, oh, fuck, I've got like so much pressure on me now. Yeah. But then Marnie Labor could be seeing stuff on social media as well and being like, well, fuck, no one wants me in the team. You know what I mean? Yeah, and not, I, not playing I badly it, either. Yeah, exactly. He's not. He's like everyone, mm-hmm. and I've written that down as well because he's all everything else about his game, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yep. His mm-hmm. hands, his the way he interplays with um, Vili Leroux is excellent. Yep. And it's just, but it's like we say, if you're the goal kicker in the team, that's your like that's you have to be nailing your kicks. And I know there were hard kicks as well, but you've got to. Doesn't matter. Really, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, yep. yeah. I do feel sorry for him. I think Pollard, that pressure, I don't think will get to him as much as another player, just could through experience yeah. and caps. I think he's one player who could probably wear it and, yeah. and cop it. Um but yeah, I had LeBoc written down as well from for his his contribution on the weekend. Like I thought he was very good. Um, but like you said, Pollard, I didn't know that, but Pollard fighting fit potentially. Yeah. I, I look at these games now, like getting closer and closer to the World Cup. What teams are you putting out? like this weekend are you risking these players or are you going okay you've cemented your place in that squad yeah. because you would hate to put a player out just because you're you know you're not as a coach you're 98 percent there and you go oh we'll just give them a, give them 20 minutes half an hour bang injury acl out of the world cup you do you know what i mean it's it would be yeah. a tough one yeah it's, it's another post i put up this week is like i don't care who, like no matter what country it is please no more injuries because we mm. want you want to be seeing your superstars there i mean the yeah. remain in Tamak. He's a superstar yep. of the game. Yeah. Man. So sexy too. I've only just recently started following yeah. him on Instagram. Holy <laughs> shit. How He's got a big be, following. Hey, how, how can you be that good at rugby, but that good looking as well? I bet he's a good bloke as well. Yeah. He'd be it's a like, legend, mate. He, surely he, he must have a small feet. He must have a small feet. It's like, he you must have pick all the boxes. <laughs> I know. I know. And but, but going back to what you just said, that guy's been prepping for four years. Legit. Yeah. Yeah. He prepped four years, and right at the time where he's in his prime, yeah, fucking shit. I happened. just feel I, like I, I'm a firm believer everything happens for a reason. There'll be something will come out of this, whether I don't know what it is, but like something will come out of this, and you'll realize why he 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 got injured. But yeah, mate, he's the full package. Hey, he um he Absolutely. does all right for himself. Um, well, moving on from fucking <laughs> fuck talking about good looking blokes, we're the best looking blokes there are. Um, so for the first try. Man, like those first few phases of boxes, box forwards, when they get a roll on, I think this is, they've been better at this. He's, he's yep. being patient with those with the roll ons and and really holding, looking after the ball. Yeah, and um, and how they get over that vantage line every single time, and what they're doing really well now is shifting, kind of stretching out defenses. 
Yeah. With them plugging holes, getting over that vantage line, they're, they're stretching out that defense as well. And those guys are getting caught for numbers on either side of the ruck. And that's how they yeah. got through on the one side for Marks to score in the corner. Yeah. And he leveled then, he's, he's level with Skulk Berger for the highest, most tries for a South African forward, which is well done to Malcolm. I actually had, but you look at you look at we've we've touched on the the physicality of the the box pack. Um, you know if Marks is starting off the bench again, we've talked about this. But if he if he hits his hits his jumper and they come down for a maul, Marks on the on the back end of that maul. Oh, it's when they over. get the go forward, but it is it's game over. And when they get that roll on, oh my gosh, man! Like you got Marks just holding that ball 10, 15 meters out. You can back Marks to just break away from that maul and just power him power over. But, um, like you said, if you have those two wider sort of packs each side um, and breaking down teams, mate, you're going to break. We're, we have an athletic big pack. If they can keep that momentum going, playing wide, you, eventually, if you can keep the ball, you're going to break teams down. I don't care who you're playing against. And I'll, I'll say it again, the size of that and the athleticism of that Springbok pack, mate, it's it would be it would be tough, really, really tough. That's, and I really think that they've worked on that is that, and we've mentioned mm. it heaps of times, is the mobility of them. Not just yep. being the one track, like, oh, we just truck it up, we just truck it up. They're really yep. getting around the park with that, like Peter Stiff to Toy. RG Snake, I, he's a yeah. monster. He's a monster. Detroit, Detroit, I'd written down because th this this game, probably more so than the other ones, when you've mentioned his name, I really kept an eye on him this weekend. So good. Yeah. Oh, mate, just, yeah, again, just physical, athletic, scores tries, just. Again, one of those players, if you're writing your team sheet down, he's one of the first you put on there. And you could say that for so many of those Springbok players. You know, when you look for the ultimate team, you go, All right, I want this player in this position or that player, Malcolm. Like, there's so many. So, again, I don't want to talk him up too much and jinx him, but I, I think from World Rugby, from other teams looking at the Springboks, Springboks right now, I think they're a they, they're definitely a force to be reckoned with. And I, I think with a few other Tier 1 teams at the moment in World Rugby, I think it's going to be a very, very unpredictable but exciting world cup for sure how good are we at talking about forwards this Mate, majority is... of my notes are forwards <laughs> are we like over i've got larue we're like i've got larue written down once again but other yeah. than that mate i've, yeah. I've literally just got forward talk well mate. i do want to i do want to talk about so obviously really instrumental i think spring uh, sia Kulisi said it in their post-match interview yeah. about how instrumental he is on attack and defense, his communication to the team, and that yeah. try that Mark scored, Sia Khaleesi said he he was Vili was breaking it down while the play was happening. So because Sia Khaleesi was on his outside, Vili was at first receiver. He yeah. was saying to Sia like, "This is going to happen. That guy's going to shoot. Take a little drift ball off me. You're going to get through and give the like detailing genius. That. And it, it genius, happened. It man. happened. It played, and that's exactly what happened. So like." Those guys being able to see two or three phases in advance are mm. so important to your team, man. Every team needs that, like those players, like, like Will Jordan, for instance, even at his age, he can yep. see those three phases ahead. And Anthony DuPont and Intermac, same style of players. I mean, yeah. Billy slots in there perfectly. We, we just talk we talk about experience, mate. And it's it's harder, I think, for these more experienced players that have been around for a while to um, you know keep up with the modern day rugby player, these younger players. Willie LaRue just makes everything look effortless. Yeah, He's again, one of these players is just poetry in motion when he plays, but you look, Le, the, the names I've got written down here, LeBoc, Jesse Creel, once again, um, Detroit. They're just these, they're just players that you know, you're going to get a great performance from Jesse Creel. Mate, I didn't realize the wheels he had. I didn't realize how quick he was. Yeah. They're, they're, he's, he's really? silenced a lot of doubters. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. How old is, how old is he? Do you know? He's two or three years younger than me. So he'd be 28, okay. 29. Yeah. So he's, yeah, he, he, yeah, I mean, he's, I guess, oldish in terms of international rugby as a back, but mate, he can, he can move. And like I said, those sort of players in a World Cup, that's, the, the players that you know you're going to get just week in, week out, solid performances from, and then produce moments like that breakaway try where he just showed his wheels and put it down under the post. Like <laughs> they're the moments in World Cups that are going to be crucial. Absolutely. Even though his first try, which was a very soft try because the mm. Wales guy fucked it up in the dead ball line, but just that awareness to be chasing that, awareness. Yeah. Like that's like, you can't those, those, those things like reaction time and awareness like that. You can't, you can't teach that. I did no, want to say okay. something about 
Oh, so did you have something else to say about Creel? No, I, I just wanted to, we, we've touched on, I, I just wanted to touch on Wales briefly. There wasn't a huge oh, well, amount of positives from this, it. Yeah, before we get on to Wales. Yep. Marnie Lebox pass to Willemse for Willemse to score his try. Oh, far out, man. It's so like the so passing is a skill on its own. You would you would mm. know this as a ten. Yeah, like that's the your main job as a ten. Yes, kicking is one of them, but being able to pass both ways, like at least mm. twenty meters, is paramount. You must be able to do that. But that pass, okay, he barely even looked. He knew exactly where his player was through that like thirty or forty meter flat cutout pass. On top of that, Willem says skill set to see that this their winger or center has rushed out the line to shift yep. off the ball he mm. shifts, so the ball was going in front of him he shifted off the ball mm. know that that ball's got enough legs on it to give him more space taken the ball the guy out the ball outside that defender and walked over untouched those little it's and beautiful man. from hours and hours of those guys playing touch uh just training the whole time playing those flat balls at training but that awareness of like at the, the peripheral vision, you're seeing it on your side, mm. it's bouncing yeah. out. I can drift off this ball, get around yeah. him, catch it, and walk over untouched. It's beautiful. A good, beautiful. a good pass, and like you, you see it. In the, the best picture is slow motion when you see the ball yes. slowly spinning yep. through the air, just hits him exactly where you would dream of hitting a good pass from a player. But like you said, that step inside and that finish, but that whole phase of play. If you even look at the phases before that, like. It was just a good passage of play and it was just nailed. If you can finish off a passage of play like that with a pass like that and a finish, beautiful. 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 But also, I just wanted to quickly say the Springboks were in front in that game for 78 minutes of that game. So wow. you put yourself in a in a Welsh shirt right now. Yeah. That's tough. Um, and they beat beat them on everything. Carries, line breaks, um, tackles completed, turnovers, everything. Uh, the box just completely obliterated them. Yeah. But Costello, sorry, Costello and Rio Dyer for the for the Welsh. I know you're going to get onto the Welsh, but I just wanted to touch on them. I think, um, you know, with, with bigger, uh, you know, again, getting on a little bit, I guess. I think having Costello in in the in the shadows there is a positive for Wales. Yes. Yep. Um, Rio Dyer on the wing, I think, was a positive as well. You look at people like, again, I don't want to talk about age too much, but you talk about people like, you know, George North can probably cover a few positions, but if he does cover the wing and he gets injured, someone like that who can step in. Is going to be good. Um, yeah, I don't know. There wasn't a great deal to talk no, about. No, but I do like that Costello. Like, I obviously look at, I watch the tens more closely. Yeah. And he's got, man, he kicks really well off the tee. He's kicking out of hand. He's good. Yeah. And he's not afraid yeah. to attack the line. So he's playing no. real flat. Um, and he's obviously got a good, good left and right pass. So they've got, they've definitely got someone there to kind of stick around, like, um, to back up Dan Bigger. Yeah, um, kind of for Dan Bigger to kind of pass on that that baton. Um, I think really well in the what they did do well in the start was their contestable box kicks and up and unders. They're really putting South Africa under pressure like that. But then they just yeah. off the ball. That's just, what I mean. They, yeah. Like it, you, you, then and then we go back to what we've touched on in previous episodes is like you've got one game plan. It could work for 15, 20 minutes, yep. but you need you need to be able to be. Yeah, that's it. Not intelligent enough, but be proactive enough to go, oh shit, this isn't working. It's not going to work now. They've, they've, you know, it's not not doing anything anymore. Let's go to plan B and let's try that. But yeah, I think the more the box starved Wales of possession, it's almost like Wales just went, there's no way back here. Yeah. Especially for those inexperienced players as well, because that would have been a bit of a learning curve for them. Again, like um, Jack Morgan, the captain, I think it is Jack Morgan. Yeah. Mm. He's um, very early on in his captaincy. So that, I mean, you, I think everyone goes through those matches where not yeah. everything goes your way. It's how we react to it. And maybe uh, a learning experience for him on how to speak to the guys behind the posts every time they got a try scored against them. Just little yeah. things. And after the game as well. So. If you're going to lose, mate, if you're going to lose, now's the time to do it. Yep. Confidence-wise, not so much. But at least they can go into you know, into training next week or this week and just go, look, this is what went wrong. It's not the World Cup yet. Now, we, now we've now we got to fix it. Yeah. Like, if we don't fix it now, we are screwed. But, um, you know, if you're going to make mistakes and you're going to, you know, going to slip up, now's the time to do it for sure. Um, and I think, I think that's that's all I mean. I'm not going to sit here and keep praising the spring box because we already know. No, they deserve it, mate. They deserve it. Even Dwayne Vermeulen as well off the bench, mate. Like, Oh, it's immense, man. These guys are what immense. do you do? Yeah. What yeah. do you do, man? Like yeah. it's just onslaught after onslaught after onslaught. It's um, 
it'll be interesting to see this weekend against uh, the All Blacks. They've made a few changes. They've got, uh, I really want to see this, is Esther Hazen and Kanan Moody's playing 13. Okay. That's a little change there. Have the All Blacks announced their team yet? No, they I haven't, haven't yet. seen. Okay, haven't interesting. Yet. Yeah. So, and then Vili LaRue, which I said, I mean, he's on the bench for this game. Jeez, I forgot who's at, at fullback. But it'd be cool if they bring Marnie LeBoc off with 30 or 20 to go and chuck Vili in at 10. LaRue, yeah, imagine that'd that. That would be lovely to see. Because they've gone with yeah. a 6 2 split again. They love Springboks okay. like forwards, man. So, yeah. That'll be a good game. Again, yeah. I'd hope. Fingers crossed, touch wood. There's no injuries, but no injuries, um, yeah. I think for I think for both of those teams this week is a really good. It's going to be a great game, um, and I think it's a good opportunity to blood maybe some of those or put people in positions that you want to be experimenting with this yeah. week. Um, but we'll see. That's that's going to be a cracking game. I hope I hope it's close and it's not a bit one sided for either team. To be honest, Friday night at Twickenham, I think it's yeah sold out, eighty two thousand. So. Should be beauty. Amazing. That'll be that'll be pumping. That'll yeah. be absolutely pumping. But we'll see. It'll be it could be good. That's a that's a one game actually out of all of them that have been played over the last few weeks. That's probably going to be well, like you said, it's sold out on Friday night in in a foreign country. No 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 home country playing there. So yeah. it says a lot. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, we will jump across then Ireland England, and I'm going to pass the baton over I'm, to. I'm going. <laughs> Far out. Where do I start, man? Oosh. Um. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ireland twenty nine, England sixteen. Look, the, the scoreline doesn't sound that bad. Yep. And when you when you look at the scoreline, but when you look at the stats, I don't know, mate. I've got that much written down. I don't know where to start. I should have categorized this into like first bit, second bit, third bit. But I'm just gonna rattle off just to start this game. They Ireland dominated England in every single way possible. They four tries to one. Um, Ireland made 471 meters in carries, England 282, 128 carries from Ireland to 104 of England, 10 clean breaks for Ireland, one for England, and 172 passes for Ireland to 126. England beat Ireland in one thing that was offloads, four three, didn't equate to anything. Anything, yeah, nothing, mate. It's um. Yeah, I don't know what to say. English rugby. What have you, you you touch on it? What what do you think? Because I've got a lot to say on this, and I'm, yeah, I want to touch on the England coach. And I think Ireland displayed what we all kind of knew about them. Everyone mm -hmm. is expecting Ireland to be they one of the favourites going into the World Cup, and they did exactly what we were expecting them to do. Their yep. basics, they do their basics extremely well. They're on New Zealand's level with execution of basic skills. So whether that be your pass straight out in front, running onto the ball, depth, all their little, all the little interplays, the forwards did so well with their little tip passes or out the back. I think Bundy Aki's one that they for his try was because the forwards little interplay and instead of playing him out the back, saw that the defender had already shot, played the short ball. Mahani's gone through and has played Bundy Aki. It's just, and it's Bundy Aki was running the out the, the back ball and for him yeah. then to adjust to go and play, to be that um, that next supporting player. Just little things like that. They clean out so effective at clean outs. Um, they stretch teams really well as well. Mm -hmm. And oh man, like the kicking is on, everything is on point. I'm not too sure because um, I see Johnny Sexton is playing this. They're playing a trial game, just a warm up game against Portugal this week. And he's yep. playing, um, but I've I've lost I've lost I've lost his name now. The ten that played for Ireland, but he I, he played really well to release release their backs. Um, so just the, the the guys that they've got stepping up to the plate, man, good good. They've obviously done well. Yeah. With they convey about of, of of players. Mate, everything you just said makes up a complete team. Exactly what we just talked about with Springboks. Um, there's a few things I want to touch on. Like I won't go into. I, I really want to touch on selection. I've been thinking about this. I've been listening to a few other podcasts as well and just wanted to get a general idea of because I've got my opinion on it. I think for me, I th think personally, and people might disagree with this, I think that Farrell should be starting at 10. I would drop Marcus Smith to the bench and I would use, I would drop George Ford. I think George Ford, no, and Farrell are very similar players, but with all due respect to George Ford, 
I think Owen Farrell is far superior to him. I, that's my opinion. It might not be everyone's opinion. I would be dropping Marcus Smith to the bench. I'd be putting Farrell at 10 and bringing Smith off the bench as that exciting, as we've already touched on, exciting impact player that can change a game if needed. Centres, again, I'm not too sure that's up for debate. Um, but, you know, the Tuolangi, Tuolangi in the centre outside, Farrell has always sort of worked, but Far uh, Tuolangi isn't in the best form. You've dropped Slade. I'd have had Tuolangi and Slade personally. Um, but I just think that you need, we've talked about it a million times, the experience, the old head at 10 and at nine. You know, Borthwick is, I, I feel Steve Borthwick is the England coach. This is how I am looking at it, is going with his game plan of, and I think he's quite old school, rather than looking at players on current form, he's almost scared to make changes or scared to upset the English public. I, I did you want to say anything? Because I, I, I want to elaborate on what I just said, but do you agree? Like, I, I just think Smith, we've touched on his vulnerability in certain situations, unpredictability. I think yeah. going into a World Cup, Farrell at 10 with that solid game, um, again, disciplinary reasons he needs to, improve um, but i just think we need farrell at 10 just to compose that team yeah, absolutely just take him forward i think what he brings as a captain as well is massive for england yeah i don't mind to Ilongi at 12 because he does what any 12 needs to do 12 should carries yeah. fucking hard he's a big body yeah. he makes strong tackles um he and mm. he's quite deceptively quick he's got a good uh like goose step and a little step i like I love Henry Slade as in he's got, he's got the left foot uh, kick. Um, he's good on mm. attack as well. Joe, is it March? How do you say, is it March? Merchant, March, yeah. He's been playing really well for them though. His defense mm. is really good. So 13 has always been like, that's the guy that- The hardest position. Defense. Yeah. And he, I think he does that really well. He knows when to shoot, knows when to hang back, knows when to shut down a play. Um, but I haven't seen him, like he hasn't really offered, much. and again, England didn't have- much attacking opportunities because it's like Ireland smothered them, man. Ireland just smothered them. I, I want to talk yeah. about Ring Rose's try because it, I mean, like we'll jump onto Ireland after if you wanted to say more about England, but there's yeah. like, I think there's, and, and Danny Cipriani said it really well in a post like recently is how outdated he feels current England play is. My question Okay, to this is, and I'm going to ask you, and you obviously won't know the ins and outs of it because we don't know what's going on there. But do you think that what's been happening in the local premiership is affecting the national team, as in clubs getting liquidated and going into foreclosure? And like, was it two or three clubs now in the past two years? Like, that must have an effect. I don't know if it's having a ripple on effect, but it must have an effect on something. <laughs> Mate, yeah, it probably does. I haven't, yeah. I haven't really thought about that. I just think that, from what I've heard about Steve Borthwick, very set in his way, he's quite controlling. Okay. Um, I, I listened to Andy Good talk on his podcast. Yes. Um, it, apparently, he's a very, quite a controlling guy. Um, had a very close relationship to Eddie Jones. Very similar in the way they approach everything. They don't give the players much media time. Like they really restrict them. Like I'm going to repeat something from another podcast here, and it just pretty much hits a nail on the head. You look at England cricket right now, you've got Brendan McCullum, who's a Kiwi cricketer, off subject a tiny bit. Um, but around the Ashes this year, the hype, the the interaction that the public have had with the players and the players with the public, and, you know, they've been out in the public and doing things, and people have got around our national team. I feel currently as an England, an English person and an England rugby supporter, I just feel a bit, mm. yeah, I feel a bit like, like there's nothing exciting that's nothing towards the players at all. Like they can't help getting selected, like we've said before. But there's just nothing. There's no oomph behind that English team. Yeah. And look, I can guarantee we do well in the World Cup. I, I can almost guarantee that. It's just what we do. We'll get to the quarterfinal, maybe the semi, and we'll bow out. That's I don't I hate saying that, but I feel like that's what's going to happen. But there's just no excitement. There's nothing, mate. It, I just feel very lackluster about the English rugby team at the moment, and it's it's showing in their performances. It's showing in the post-match conferences, uh, press conferences. I look at Steve Borthwick speak, and I'm just like, far out, mate. Like, I can have do some, something. something about, yeah, yeah, do yeah, something, yeah. So I don't someone know. Mate, it's was, a little bit of a concern. Someone was relating it to the 2007 uh, English side that couldn't win, fucking couldn't even win a, mm. win a captain's a captain's run. 
and then yeah. into the World Cup, and then they made the final. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be interesting. We can only wait and see. But yeah, like you say, yeah. they're, they're, they're not showing. They're not showing much at all. Showing nothing. They're not. Mate, yeah. They're showing nothing. I'll, yeah. I'll, as bluntly as that, like he's. They're not showing any sign that they could even come close to beating France, New Zealand, South Africa. Like honestly, Australia will probably give them a great run for their money at the moment. No, like, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm talking, put them in a World Cup right now. I think yeah. Australia, even after the performances that they played, I just, I don't know. I'm lost for words, mate, to be honest. I think it's a bit of a, it's a shame, mate, because English rugby have always been so 100%. exciting to watch. But anyway, I hope, I, I hope I'm proved wrong. I hope I'm proved wrong. I, I hope so too. Like we always say, we want, we do want Australian rugby to be good and we do want English yes. rugby to be good. Like, Course. Both of them. We love, we love, we love rugby as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not too sure, but and, and I, like about about England, man. I saw a couple people also saying like, with those last twenty or thirty minutes, they were just making crazy calls, like fucking put Danny Care on to ten, put fucking Marcus Smith to fullback, like try do something. It's like almost like when you see a drunk person laying passed out at a party. And you like slap them against the face, like, hey, fucking wake up, do something. Wake up, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, mate, I've got nothing else to say on it, to be honest. Like, I've got a lot to say on it, um, but it's it speaks for itself, mate. To be honest, it's quite it's quite disappointing and it's quite concerning leading into World Cup. But like I said, England or England, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll do okay. But in terms of that performance, mate, it's it is really disappointing. We've been one of the top tier teams for. A long time now but that's for me that's not good enough and speaking to my brother again we talk a lot about rugby you know they're playing fiji and they're struggling a lot of the media over there are saying is there any point in buying tickets for it is there any need like that's yeah, not no. what you want around english rugby man it's, it's no. never been like that and it's it's just disappointing i'm, I'm like i'll refer back to the cricket you've got to create somewhat of a what's the word I'm looking for? Like it's got to be entertaining. So I know it's a small hype. I, like, yeah, hype yeah. Buy, buy and, into it. Like let's yeah. be carry. Like they've got so many characters in their side as well. Yeah. Like, let's see these guys, man. Let's talk to yeah. them. Let them. Be their own people as well. They get so they get so like boxed into you need to be this. And Danny Cipriani said it in his. It's like it's stooped in this old tradition of doing things certain ways, but. Well, Man, as mate, we know, like things have changed and not just in life, but like not just in rugby, in life, everything has changed. And you've got Zach, to- you got Zach Mercer over in France, mate, top 14 player of the year. Not this year, I think it was last year, in career best form. He's a number eight. Um, he's already admitted that he'll sign for Gloucester, I think he said. Um, let's talk about him going to Quinns and Don Brand to six at Quinns. Um, just being overlooked. And you know, we're struggling for an eight at the moment. Billy Vanapolo, not only has he got a red card, he's carrying a slight injury. We've got no, he's our, he's our only out and out eight in that squad. And you've got Zach Mercer sitting there going, Well, hello, like I'm it's not like I'm ruling myself out. I'm here for selection, one of the best players in France. And you look at the players that are playing in France, that's no easy feat. So um it's a lot it just confuses me, mate. I think Steve Borthwick is just old school, um, caught up in that old school mentality and um you know, for his sake and England's sake, I hope they do very well. But it is quite concerning currently, for sure. It's 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 not it's not a pleasant place for English rugby to be in. Quickly on the believe Vunapolo incident, mm. red card. Yeah, for me, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, red... I'm also I'm also at red, but I'm also leaning to what you brought up about when is the when is the owners been put on the attacker, like attackers think... leaning into into tackles like that when they've got the ball. It's yeah. hard then to, to to dip even lower to make his tackle. I uh, think if yeah. I think if Billy used his arms, I oh. think he would have had a bit more of a a case. But uh, for me, it was direct contact to the head, no arms. He, he's he's just he, you can see him sort of project he's, his weight yeah, into the yeah, head. Like yeah. he's and I've he's seen a like big... I've played with a lot of Polynesian boys, and they love man those big shots. That for me, sometimes the arm does come around, but it comes around late. late. So they lead, like yeah. you tackle with your shoulder. I get that. Like you do make your tackles with the shoulder, but they do want to see you making an well, they, to wrap. The thing is, they slow it all down, and you hear it a lot in rugby league as well. But let's put these replays at full speed. Like yeah. I'm not yeah. defending Billy Von Apollo at all. I think it's a red, but like. Yeah, you might hit and then wrap, but like when they slow it down, they stop the vision on the on the impact. And like, well, the arm's nowhere near it. So, yeah, for me, it's a red mate. I think um, 
But I do agree. Like you've got to take some sort of responsibility going into a. Yeah. But even when we go back to when I was playing, mate, you get players just just dive at your feet. You, yeah. They just dive at your feet. You had no chance. But it's more of an issue now. But again, without touching on it too much, it's going to be a bit of a um talking point going into the world cup they've got to be consistent sure. currently you know with, with a few different tackles over the last few weeks they haven't been consistent and we don't want talk it we don't want to talk around controversy in the world cup we want to see good rugby and rules are rules mate it's it's the same in a lot of sports like there's a lot of gray areas just make rules yeah and that's it you know what i mean it, it, surely it's not that hard but we'll see we'll see what happens so jumping on to, to ireland um man beautiful i want to touch on this ring rose try because yep. it was every single bit of play, anything that you can think about having leading up to a try was in this play. They had they took the ball wide, they brought it back with forwards that were interplaying in between each other. There was out the back balls, there was offload offloads, there was running from depth, there was skip passes, there was an inside ball, there was a fucking cross kick, there was a collect mm. from the cross kick, a step, handoff, like there was everything you can think of having in a, in a try. set of play to lead up to a try for this. And they all executed it beautifully. And you know, it was set because I wrote, yeah, like ring Rose was caught the ball where Hansen would have been as the winger. Yep. Hansen yep. was standing behind. He's obviously got a better boot than ring Rose because he hit the cross kick. So mm -hmm. he's shifted in off the second, third phase to get the ball behind the forwards to cross kick so him and Ringrose mm. swapped and Ringrose has caught it. Um, and man, that's, it's, yeah, it's beautiful. It just, it just shows a team full of confidence that yeah. back themselves, that back each other as well, more importantly than yourself, back the players around you and they're full of confidence, mate. You know, that's a sort of situation. If England tried that, they dropped the ball on the yeah. first pass. Currently on form without even messing around. That's how, that's what would happen. But Ireland are just in this rich vein of form and, they're backing each other. They're backing themselves. They've got a great coach. They've got great defense, great attack, great mix in that team now of old and new. And um, that, yeah, that was an in insane try. And ugh, again, like the box at the moment, mate, is there any, would you, would you want to be in any better form going into a world cup as yeah, Ireland? Exactly. There's exactly. some standout nations at the moment, mate. And I think it's going to come down to those at the end, but yeah, the Ireland are Ireland are great to watch, man. They're just a great team to watch. Bundyaki in the center, just having that, and he's got wheels on him as well for yep. a big, big lad, man. He can he can move. Yeah. Um, yeah. What can I say? They they um they just again as a whole they just dominated England, but that, that was that was good to watch. That pool D is just a pool of death. Ireland. I'm just looking at it now. I got it up earlier for this exact reason. Uh, so is it Ireland, South Africa, Scotland, Tonga? Where is it? Here we go. It is. I, I was listening to it earlier because I was I, I was like, I just need to see what um here we go. Where is it? We've got South Africa, Ireland, Scotland. This was before, so yeah, it doesn't say the um the other two teams in it, but even if you even if you disregard the other two right now, South Africa, Ireland, and Scotland. Fuck, that could be easily be your one, two, and three for the finishing of easy, the right? On, yeah. on current form, yeah. And then you've got and then you've got the other group, you've got New Zealand and France together. Yeah. which is great. Then wow. you've got, you know, Wales who aren't in the best of form, Australia, not yeah. in the best of form, Fiji, who can cause yeah. an upset as well. That's going to be a great group. And then you've got the likes of England with Japan and Japan, you know, playing decent yeah. rugby these days. And then Argentina. Yeah. Far out, man. I don't know what to think about this. I, do, I did hear the the world or the head of world rugby has come out saying that he wants to change how they pick the, the, the groups. Yeah. Because they pick it like right after the, world cup and then later on like it, it, it like doesn't make sense that you have some yeah. groups that are so fucking stacked and then other yep. groups that aren't as stacked so i think they want to change that a bit coming back to ireland um a few standout players i think they too <laughs> like a, i got a little bit of flack for it for saying it on about the scottish players that they there was the south african guys that i was backing mm -hmm. but in ireland's team it's the kiwi boys man that jamison gibbs or gibson park and james gibson park Lowe, yeah are yeah. fucking outstanding for them. So Gibson Park's service is up there. I'm saying now is up there with Aaron Smith. He's so quick. And yeah. his ball, his ball, the passing is always out in front. Every single On point. time. He's so quick to get to the ball. So quick. Yeah. I could Gibson, I've got Gibson Park. I've written down the names here. Dan Sheehan, uh, which we'll get to. Yeah. Uh, Gibson Park, Aki Henshaw. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like the same, the same names, but you, you, like, yeah. Yeah. You, you touch on Gibson Park though. Um, you watch Aaron Smith's passing, his technique passing wise, he throws his hands towards the target and he doesn't, he, he does that consistently throughout the whole game and you watch his service and it is on point. Like you just said, mate, Gibson Park service, different technique, but just nails it, mate. Like if you put, yeah, wherever you put your hands, he'll hit you and off both hands. And I've played with some great nines and you can still tell the difference in power off their left compared to their right. You can see with, especially Aaron Smith, but Gibson Park now as well. There's no, there's no weakness there. I reckon at training, or if you were to ask him, there's no weak side of his play. It's just, oh, this is what I do. I pass the ball from my left and right. That's it. Oh, yeah, every time. Yeah. And I just love how he must be one of the fittest. He'd be the fittest in that team for sure because he's at every single breakdown. Breakdown, he's yeah. He's there. Yeah. Any penalties, any quick throws, any quick taps. Like, fuck, oh. he's, he's there. I will tell you, like for me, I, I remember when I was trialing back at home for my, you know, age group and rep stuff, I, I played with a young lad called, or say young lad, he's the same age as me, called Danny Poynton. I mean, he, he's playing around the Gloucester area and the Gloucester sides and stuff. Um, his passing mate, like, and this is legit story, he bruised the base of my thumb, right? His passing, was that was that accurate, but that powerful? I've never, he was only a small lad. Yeah. I've never played with anyone with a pass like that, but what that allowed me to do as a 10, apart from strapping my thumbs up before a game was to talk that that extra split second I had on the ball was valuable. And, and, and the better the standard you play, the more time you can have on that ball is just, it, it's gold. So um, you look at these, these players like Gibson park handing the ball to someone like Sexton or, you know, someone like Bowden Barrett, someone like Richie Mwanga, They've got enough time as it is, but then you you add that aspect of that split second more, it could yeah. be a game changer. Yeah. They're great. They're great to watch. And um, yeah, again, again, Gibson Park isn't isn't hasn't been around for a great deal of time, but he's definitely um he's definitely one of I just he just stands out for me. I think it's a name as well. Gibson Park's a yeah. pretty cool name, but like yeah. he um he's a great he's a great player to watch. And I think I think James Lowe gets my shout because he's not necessarily the fastest winger. He's a big boy, so he can he, he can uh, like he obviously stands up for his own, gets through yeah. tackles, he's strong, but mm -hmm. he's got that left boot. That's again that yeah. we talk about having the right boot and a left boot. And he's so important just to get yeah. that. He can kick the fucking leather off a ball as well. So they use yeah. it a lot with that. And um, you'll see all, most teams, it's like guys will get the nod over someone else for the amount of tools they have in their toolkit. And like, adding that a winger is a left footer but not just a left footer he can actually kick the ball it's yeah a massive tool to have in your toolkit i've i've said this mate as the, with the coach and i do I, I try and encourage you know the whole team to take part in the initial kicking lesson i guess if or, or session um just so everyone knows the basics of how to kick the ball and then if you want to add a bow to your you know or a string to your bow sorry and learn how to kick further it's only going to better you as a player and, and again it comes down to selection oh you got this person or this person or oh, this guy can kick or why wouldn't we put him in ahead so kicking is a huge thing especially with wingers like putting little grabber kicks through or realizing someone's going to come across them hit them into touch so they'll put a little kick through um it's gonna yeah it's gonna go a long way for a lot of players and like you said james low i i never really i, I mean i rate him as a winger i didn't really look at him and go wow but like now you say it yeah he's a big body he does break tackles he scores tries. Yeah, <laughs> he's a winger, exactly. so that's, like you can't really ask for much more. You don't need much more, exactly. And he's, I think, yeah. he's little the relationship he has with Gibson Park as well. Yeah, like coming yep. down the blind side or just the little interplays around the ruck is uh, super important for them. Just adding yep. it to the point of attack is mm -hmm. uh, super important for them. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty much all I've got written down for Ireland, man. Yeah, same. I didn't expect anything less from them. That's like I, they definitely lived up to the hype of them being one of the favorites going into the world cup yeah um it's it's just i just wanted to um you, you look at these I, I heard earlier this week these top tier teams they have someone employed in their in their squad should i say or their team who can go and fight for these players when they get charged i know it's a little bit off island but i'm just talking about red cards yellow cards yeah. bans suspensions this is factored into their almost like a salary cap these yeah. second tier nations tonga Samoa, Fiji, they don't have this. Right. And this is this is something that I heard during the week where I was like, this isn't, it, it isn't fair because it, the guy who does it for England, look at the whole Owen Farrell thing. He's been there since 
I think Mike Tyndall said 2003, maybe before that, he's wow. still there. And he's amazing at what he does. And the amount of people and the amount of charges he's had downgraded through him, just knowing the game of rugby, having other factors that might have played into that current, that like incident yeah. has really helped them. But, you know, I just feel for these tier two nations of not being able to afford that. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a equal playing ground there. It's, it's, it's quite unfair. And if someone, you know, if someone from top and look, the Pacific Islanders love, love putting on shots and they can easily get it wrong. They can do that for England and you can fight it. And you know, you've got the best person in the business to try and downgrade it. I just feel for these other teams that can't afford that because it, it could be the difference between making out the pool stage or even going further. So, um, yeah, I just, I, this is just something that I'd read and heard about during the week. And I was like, it's a bit rough. Very, a bit rough very, on those on those not so strong nations. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they've had to fight for so long to get their players back. Yeah. To not so getting well, paid, some of them. Yeah, like just I mean, probably probably now, but like getting paid pennies compared to a lot of the players and they fight, they get there. And yeah. Anyway, it's it's something that um I didn't realize I didn't realize there was someone who does that. I know some an yeah. official would go over a player, but yeah. that who actually fights a charge, yeah. A bit rough. Really in all in all sports, mate, there's uh there's that hierarchy or that that fucking Illuminati group that just sit there mm. and kind of pull the strings. Whether yep. you like to admit that or not, it's... Man, it's it's really what cool. happens. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I think that wraps it up for this this week. Um, we'll like looking forward to this weekend. We've got the, yeah, the box and the, the AVs and it'll be, they'll be wrapping up there in quotes, warm-up games because then we're like 19 or 20 days out from the first game. Uh, yeah. So we might we can slowly start doing some World Cup stuff. So I mean, some iconic moments, maybe some stuff like oh, that. My. Yeah, can I just, um, just quick shout out to Edwin Jones again, Eddie Jones, the Wallabies coach at the airport. Yep. Um, just just an another great moment from Eddie. Doesn't you know? Doesn't miss. <laughs> he's, look, look, I just want to quickly touch on this. He got questioned on you know they were just about to leave the airport, yep. fly to France a week early than everyone else apparently. He's been absolutely hammered by the press. And did he let them know? He told them all to give themselves an uppercut as he walked away. <laughs> um, again, is this another strategy from Eddie to um, to take the attention away from the players? Maybe. But um, he just, he he did the right thing. He fronted the media. And they just, from word go, just <laughs> obliterated him and the team and just put him down. And look, I can see his frustration. Like, he's going yeah. as a Wallabies coach. Yeah, they're not informed. But the media just want to just... They, it was pretty harsh. It was pretty harsh. And I think people were saying, was it too much or not? He just put his foot down and said how he felt. Like, you know, we're going to a World Cup and you're already saying the Wallabies are rubbish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're not, we, we all know they're not in the best form. But like when you get questioned at an airport, there's banners everywhere, Wallabies, you know, France 2023, blah, blah, blah. And then what the first press conference of the official World Cup duty, he just unleashes me. <laughs> just cracks me up. <laughs> Fair, like a big shout out to him. He's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders and... um but to tell all the uh, media to give themselves an uppercut as he walks away, I thought classic Eddie. Like I've said, he's getting eyeballs on the game and that would be part mm. of his contract or something in yeah. small fine print would be like, mate, you can say whatever you want. Obviously don't yeah. keep swearing too much, but we need eyes on, 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 on rugby Australia. And he's doing that. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, yeah. And I just want to say this before we wrap it up. I'm just going to, and you're going to love this, but, after watching all the rugby over the last few weeks, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's going to be painful to say, but I'm going to back South Africa to go back to back in this world cup. If, if, if they can perform like they did on the weekend, mate, I think they will. I think they're just, they're going to be too good. I think that their style of play against people like the all blacks, again, I, I'm not going to take this week into consideration because I think it's going to be a bit of a, in, you know, sort of messing around with a few people and stuff, a few changes, but Mate, they just look super dangerous. And again, Wales and Wales in front of that sort of crowd. Regardless, I don't care who Wales have got out. That's a very, very dominant performance. And um, they, they'll be full of confidence going into this World Cup. We don't have to say you love that. Shouldn't have said that. Shit, say anything else, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to wrap that up. I'm going to clip <laughs> that up and I'm going to put that out as well. <laughs> Shit. Lovely. Shit. Lovely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for jumping on and listening. Thanks for all the lovely stuff, all the comments and all that. We really appreciate it. And um, we'll see you next time. Go the Thanks, mate. Go the <laughs> all right, guys. Bye.